in solitude. Let's hope that anchor holds there. I am off the coast of South Devon. A bit more breeze than I'd hope for, but it's clear water. It's sort of plankton-y stuff in the water there. I can see bits there. I've no idea which way the tide's going. I can never work it out. It's supposed to be flooding, but who knows? It'll be a wind against tide. I've got so much chum, I've emptied my freezer, people. The lot is going in. It is all going over the side. I'm done with the sharking. Gonna have the last go it is today. They tell me there's some bonito down here. One was caught yesterday. So, and a few black bream as well. So I'm getting rid of everything I possibly can in bags and chum over the side. So I'm fed up with the wind in the microphone and you find it really annoying. Uh, a little tip, make sure you do a couple of half hitches over your onion sack when you throw it over the side so it doesn't slip off and you lose the bag. I mean, if you're going shark fishing and lose the bag, you generally will lose any chance of sharks. So luckily there's a little ring area there that I can tie off to and look at that. That is beautiful. That is what every shark fisherman wants to see. That lovely slicker, oh dear. My goodness me, I'll have to have a cold shower after looking at all that. That's what keeps me going, putting shark lines out. It's always worth a go. Anyway, the wind's dropped a bit. I might even be able to talk to the camera. It's going to be windy in the mic. The downside is I, I'm on neap tides, which are small tides, not much movement, not much flow, not great for fishing. Um, well, if this chum doesn't go away that much, I would cube it up and drop it over the side. And I might have to go inshore just to get a bit of tidal flow. I think it's high tide about two. So I'm trying to keep out the wind. Sit down here and hope you're not sitting in fish oil. Um, if there's some oceanic bonito around, they're the small bonitos. Uh, I feel they're going to be up in this chum. And look at the birds around me now. I've got a massive, massive slick there. That is half a freezer full that's going in today. I'm just fishing Paternoster, two hooks, small hooks about size four, freshwater hook, a couple of bits of squid. So you could get a bonito off the bottom there, of course you could. But I feel there might be a chance of a bream as well. So while there's a bit of tide flow, I'd better get these rods out. I'm going to go down the back and then when I fish with the uh, one of these other light rods, I'm just going to maybe put a small sinker on it, a couple of shots just to keep it below the surface. And when I've been in foreign countries catching Benito, they're in the chum at the back. They're really, really on the surface. So we're going we're gonna to see how we go. I'm going to assault them with rods and then I'll put out the uh, Paul Wiggle or Thresher Shark rod again for the final, final time, I feel, as I will have no chum left. More rods, please. Oh, Frank too. Yes. The dreams of sharks in a 50 year old boat, the first shark ever caught in one of these, will be a dim and distant, well I won't say failure because we've only just started, three full bags over the side, I'm going to, oh, somebody's supposed to be watching this rod, oh first, oh first drop, oh first drop, oh thank you, thank you so much, oh that could be a bream, a live mackerel would be nice for the thresher shark. Oh, this could be a bream. We could be. Are we gonna? Is that chum gonna make a huge difference? Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, nice bream. Oh, is it? Well, listen. The bream kept coming and coming, one after the other. And providing you use fairly small hooks, I mean, listen, when they're aggressively feeding, they will take pretty much anything, even a big hook. But look at that, lovely. Beautiful white cliffs in the background. No, it's not Dover, like a lot of people say. Oh, it's Dover. No, no, I did say it's in Devon. Anyway, it will pay you to knock off a few strips like this of squid ready. If you know you've got a lot of small fish there, why don't you prep yourself ready and have little tiny pieces of squid you just pick up and just pop over the hook. I'm only using small hooks here, sort of size four, fresh water. Um, I like to have a sort of a strong wire hook because you never really know, and I have had rare species like rays, small eye rays and congreal taking those, bull house occasionally on these small hooks. Generally, generally they will take the bottom hook. 
and I find that the other anglers might be different, but I find if you fish a two hook pattern oster like this, when you drop it down to the bottom, the bream will generally take the uh, top hook. You can see there the slick in the background, chum slick's going away, over there is smooth, but you've got to keep that bag shaking. I mean, I've still got it in my mind that I might get a thresher shark or bull wheel shark close to shore like this. In fact, I'm sure that would, would happen eventually. But you've just got to get as much smell in the water as you can. Tide's a little bit, little bit down, but look what this chum bag does and bits of chum I drop over. It gets, well, the, the, all the reef fish get going on it as well. The one thing I would say is the last few years I've noticed that on the surface you don't get the garfish. I've got a bite on that left hand rod. Oh my God, it looked like I nearly had a double take then. The garfish and the mackerel further up in the water don't seem, you know, so prolific as they were or as I remember. And this rod's only a very, very light rod. That's all I fish now, a lot of light rods. Bit of fun, strong line, light rods, strong line. You know, 15, 20 pound line. No need, I don't like going to too light line, it just isn't no point. I know you can only pull so hard with fishing rod, but when you're catching fish like this, really there's nothing else to uh, do except, my God, rig up another rod? How many rods can this man fish? I think I could be entering for the Guinness World Book of Records of how many fishing rods can a man alone use. I can't, I can't get away from fish. No, 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 no. It's on. That's another bream. Three bream, and I haven't even got my conga rod down yet. It's about four to, no, I think it's five years since I've had bream fishing here like this. The first time I came with Mike, it was really, really good. And then it seemed to go downhill for a few years, for us anyway. It looks like it's back on big time, but I'll tell you what, I think this chum has something to do with it. I'm never going to get that shark one out of this rate. I don't think I'll be able to drop these down. Well, the wind's up in the microphone again, so I thought I'd just go to voiceover. And I'm still getting plenty of fish down there on the bottom. And because being slower tides, the chum has more chance of sinking deeper. Yes, it's a dogfish this time, but listen, we're all grateful for a dogfish at some stage or other. And on a small hook, let's hope he hasn't throated it. No, and there we go. Nice dogfish. Back he goes. You can eat them, but to be honest, I don't very often now. Small hooks, cast it way back down there in the slick and see what else is about. Right, I'm trying to get a conga as well, being greedy, want a bit of everything I've got. Plastic boom, about a six ounce bomb, four or five feet of about 60 or 80 pound. And there is Mr. Squid about to go down. I'm going to nip those tentacles off because I'm sure the bream are going to strip this and then I'm going to try mackerel on the other one. Now the bream have gone off, isn't that weird? Does that mean there's stuff like conga moving around down there? Or sh 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 sharks. I'll be amazed if I don't get any mackerel coming that snake too. And they can be jammed up there, out the way. Doesn't matter if you use fixed ball reels. In fact, I'd say they're growing in popularity for ease of use on boats. People use them for quite big fish, they're using, not that I go and buy them, but they're big heavy spinning reels. I think this lead is a little bit too light, but the tide will die on me. And I'd sooner it was on the bottom, especially if there's some bream around. Or were, because I haven't touched that bait. It could be, see, it swung up too high in the water. So I'm gonna change leads. See if that makes any difference, although this one on the right, pretty sure is uh, well on the bottom. In foreign countries, you're sort of fishing more on the surface. But in the UK, colder waters 
the fish seem to be down deep. Let's check this one more about it. Oh, look at the bream having a go at this big squid there. Or was that the mackerel? I think that was a mackerel. I think this other blue rod, old Frank too, can be free lined and take that lead off. Either that or the tide is just dying on me. Yeah, no, bait's okay. Let's try one further back. I'm in line with the chum there anyway. And here you can float fish down the back there. Drift the bait back under a float. So you've got wind in the mic here, so you might or might not hear this. I'm gonna run the shark line out, put it about 50 feet deep. And uh, I got it on a sliding float and just a whole mackerel of indeterminate origin. It's old, it's shocking, and until I catch a fresh one, there's no point in using anything but this. With a wish, a hope, a wing and a prayer or whatever. Now normally I would cut the tail off of that, um, but as there's not much tide, I don't think it's gonna spin in the tide. So it's just gonna run it back where it is, let it sink under its own weight. Hopefully not go through the other lines. Ooh, that's the sound we wanna hear. One of those. Hello, Billy Bream's back. The float is locked in there on a trip release mechanism which I invented myself and has probably been much copied. In fact, I saw it in a magazine, a bloke wrote about it once. Another expert. There are indeed many in the fishing world. I can consider myself one of them. I just go fishing and catch what I catch. I'm gonna put this back about 30 yards. The cream should still be on there. Swimming round around the other line, no doubt. I think the back there is out the way. Bear in mind I'm fishing alone, so time I clear the lines, get the anchor up, start the engine. I want to make sure that I don't get backlashed with a fast take. That should do it. Quite handy having that uh, having that there like this. Oh, I think I've missed that one. No, something's still there. And nothing on those big baits. They could well have been stripped. That's what you've got to watch with big baits and you've got black bream around. They just nibble and strip away the baits. I guess another bream. Yeah, look at them. There's some down there. And then you can unhook him like this, just get him back. Hooks out, fish is there, ready to go back. I think he went in the water. Ah, doesn't feel like a bream? Yeah, it does. You only need light tackle on four ounces. Look, look at it, look. Goodness me. Dancing against the sunlight. Oh! That's the big bait. There could be little fish on it, but... Oh, he's off. He's off and running. Over he goes. I think that was probably bream rattling away on that because that's the squid, that's the mackerel, that's the shark line, that's the bonito line, these are the bream lines. Shake up time. 
I'm just winding this up to check and it seems that it could have a dogfish on it. That was that bite I think I I saw earlier on. It looked a bit snatchy for a dogfish, but that's what my money is on. It is indeed. Look at this squid's going. Oh no, small small conger. The boot lace come. Well, it's not even a strap that one. There we go. Mr. Conger tum, come to town. So I mean, man, we're doing okay, aren't we? Really? You can get these little tea bars in the tackle shop. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool in the water there. It's only a small one, but there are some big ones here. Just slide it over the hook, turn it upside down, and use the weight of the fish to jerk it off. Away he goes. Another squid, or should I try a mackerel? Let's try a chunk of mackerel. I just whack it on, look. Billy Basic. It's a squid here. We'll pull back down on top. Or not. Now sometimes you will get small fish nibbling on this. Well, what I've done, I've put the bream rods closer to the back of the conger rod. It's a bit similar to how I, I used to do the stinger rig with a small hook on the back of a, a big bait for picking up little nibblers, just so you can catch something. Well, we're getting the numbers. We just need some size. Smith, any bites on that rod? It shouldn't be pulling over like that. <laughs> oh, I thought so. I did think so. Are you guys keeping count of how many fish are being caught on this rod that I pulled out of the skip and caught back? Gotta be a boom. I've got a lot of stuff to cut up there, a lot of stuff to cube up and drop over. I just haven't had a minute, I haven't had a sandwich or anything yet. Drink or nothing, look, look, look. Bream after bream after bream. Wowee. Late in the season. See how I fold the fins up, hold it, push the hook down and out. There he is. Lovely fish. And going back. I can't keep, justify keeping any fish, people. I don't be, a, lot of it, a lot of you say, we could eat those. Yeah, I know I could eat them, but I just cleared my freezer out. It's cost me a fortune, as other people might find out. Just freezing bait with this energy crisis we're all, we're all getting. So I figured, you know what, do I, do I, do I need all, all that? It's cheaper just to go and buy some fresh bait. It really is. Maybe keep a few mackerel back, you know, as backup. But all that chum, I've got boxes and boxes and canisters of it. When? I just don't go shark fishing anymore. Or do I? No, I think it just fell over. I've got to have something to eat. I think I'm the only, no, one, oh, there's a bite, yeah. That was a bite, guys, I pulled that down. Better lie. We'll check that out. I'm gonna go get, we're gonna die of starvation. I'm gonna put the camera there, there's somebody else can watch the rod for me. It's that one. I know it's a bite, I'm gonna check this white one. Could be bream just banging at it, you know, they will do, especially squid. They've just robbed that hook blind. Yeah, they're not touching the mackerel. I think he's still there. Let's try and sneak up on him. 
No, that was bream banging at it. You'll probably find the squid. Although I had a big cube of mackerel on there, but top with a bit of squid as well. Oh, there you go. Clean hook. Right. If that's the way they want it. So fish. This is a 44 piece of mackerel. The most powerful bait in the world. It could take your lips straight off. Well fish, do you feel lucky? Just ask yourself, did I bait up with mackerel or did I bait up with squid? In all this excitement, I just can't remember. It's not the same as it, Clint Pullen. It doesn't, it just doesn't seem the same. Ah oh dear, I do enjoy talking to myself. More squid. And I must have something to eat. Oh, let me just show you. See how that's all chewed up there, people? That's the bream down there that are doing that. What you want to do is this. If you do get a quiet moment, just slice yourself a load up like this so you can just turn around, hook them up and send them down. What a view. There's another one of the rental boats coming out. I guess they're going mackerel in. I've not heard much of mackerel. I've really not heard much. They've got more mackerel in this boat than they've got in the sea at the moment. All you fishermen know, this is absolutely a recipe for a bite. I've had a little knock on that uh, tangy rod. Seems to have dropped it. And that was mackerel. That was a piece of mackerel. That's better. Almost human. I'll tell you what we don't get now, so much. Look, go down Cornwall, stacks of fish, we know that. But further up the coast, you don't seem to get, you don't seem to get the garfish and the mackerel coming right up in chum sticks like we used to years ago, especially the garfish. I know people in Cornwall say, yeah, we've had 50,000 garfish, but that's Cornwall. It's not up further up the coast, the south coast. The more you work your way along the coast, it seems like less and less garfish. They were like a regular summer species, weren't they? You could float fish off piers. Somebody watch out. Where's that boy? Smith, get out from those buckets, boy. For God's sake, clean them up, stack them, do your homework and watch the rods. Why do I employ him? He's never going to make a skipper. That was a bite on that one. Yeah, I mean here, you should be seeing fish in the, in the back of the slick here. Look how long the slick is, for goodness sake, look at it. There's, if it gets much bigger, there'll be people in Torquay Marina phoning up the environment agency saying there's been an oil disaster. It's going just where I wanted it to go. Straight down past all the Jurassic cliffs. I could catch a plesiosaur. Don't laugh, you never know. I've got to start chunking now, I think. That's cubing, cubing up bits and pieces. Oh, I saw that one out the corner of my eye. There, there he is. Could be a pouting. Got a small fish on. Guess in a bream. Yeah. Note the other hooks, guys. All stripped. Oh. oh! Hang on a minute. Oh! Congruent, I missed him. What a shame. Will he come back? 
just out, out the corner of my eye, I saw it. Oh well, bait check time anyway. I think that was half a mackerel. That was dear, that was a decent fish, that one people, but it was a decent fish. Watch out of the way. You see how easy it is by cutting a load of strips up. What I call in between <laughs> in the quiet times. Yeah, okay. Not much quiet happening today. That was a good eel, that one. I'm kind of tempted to put Frank 2 into conga mode because I don't think I've had a really big fish. I've had carp on him, sure. I mean, it goes without saying. Yeah, that's gone. I reckon he's had the bait off that. Yes, the bait's gone, Graham. That was a decent one because that was a, a Taylor mackerel. For those who wonder, they do actually like mackerel, possibly. Oh, yeah, they, they're okay with squid. They like squid as well. I can't believe I'm plowing for all my baits like this. I haven't got monster conga hooks on because it's not a sort of monster conga place. You know, 50 pounders maybe they have. Send it down. Come on, mate. I know you don't want to go, but... Going out there for the calls. Oh, God. <laughs> I, told, I told that boy to watch one of these rods and one of them was buckled over there. I think it was the old skip rod. One of them was on the go. That's not that one. It ain't that one. Well, one of the bags I've had over the side here, I've been thawing out stuff in that sack. And you can see the mess I've got of everything. It's squid, sprats, trout. It's all going to get cubed up and dropped over like that. I can't be bothered to put it in a bag and I'm certainly not taking it back home. I think it was a nibble on that one. No, I must have missed it. Is it on the bottom? Oh, it's a nibble on that one, that's for sure. There we go. That one's got to be changed. For, oh, no, 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 oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Cluster. It's that time, it's the totally awesome time, yes. Double strikes. I'm gonna have to put this one down. People wonder what it's like making these films. I'll tell you what, doing it like this with chum, it's very, very hard work on your own. It is non-stop. I've had a flask and a sandwich. I think it's number six or eight at a bream. I'm obviously not gonna film them all because Oh, it's a good fish, that one, either that, oh, it's a double. That must be good. I think that might be the... I think that's bream of the day, guys, or oh, so far. Absolutely. It's still on! He's off. Oh, 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 oh no. It's a cover of conga. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't put any more hooks on, Graham, please. Oh my god. Do they like that chum or do they like that chum? It's a summer eel, I think. I 
I'm running out of rods. I haven't even put this stuff in yet. Oh, it's gonna be a conga. It's not, it's a, it's a swordfish. <laughs> it is a swordfish. Right, let's go. Here's a big bream, guys. I'm not sure he's got me other line, something's happened there. I think he has. He swum through the other line, but that is a spanker, my goodness. Look at this one. Look at the size of that bream. That is, I think, the biggest bream I've ever caught up this end. That's a beaut, isn't it? That's a spiker. I need more plasters. Well, I'm going through the old, the old bait digger's bucket here. And I'll come up with a piece of rainbow trout. So don't neglect, I just chunked it on there, a piece of rainbow trout because I've had plenty of fish on those. There's lots and lots of oil in it. I'm gonna heave it back there out the way. I'm not even sure in, he's in a fish on in the tangle now. Heave this one back out of the way and see, I've not had a great deal on the mackerel head. It's been uh, tail sections they've been wanting. I have to see what else I've got in there. Squid, I've got some, I oh, know I have got, I should have some little, Bits of frozen ragworm and broom generally absolutely go crackers for that. I want you to go pretty crackers at the moment. I'm not sure I could take any more. I have left Frank 2 back there, just under the surface, because I just got the feeling, you know, I'm more likely to get an oceanic bonito up in the water than I am near the bottom. I feel what I feel. See, I've got some of these that I've sort of sorted down frozen and salted down ragworm that will cost an arm and a leg so I thought well I'm not going to waste them and I have used them before to be honest for wrasses. oh my god look there's nothing wrong with those I think I'll try those so I don't have a huge amount of squid got plenty of chum if anybody wants any spare chum let me know I'm going to pull the squid off We'll whack a couple of these on. And don't forget, guys, look, this is this is using leftover bait. In fact, they're pretty tough. I'm well impressed with those. Snap them off. One worm I can get on two hooks. The salt's nice where I've salted them going into the cut. That's quite mournful. These worms are not bad at all. The salt is what's toughened them up. I've never done a lot of good with ragworm, but I've been doing them individually and salted them. And it's been doing the biz, relatively. Nearly wiped on my hat then. Now, I just feel, guys, this is not going to last long. Go a little bit farther back. That's weird, nothing on that trout yet. There we go. Yeah, nice cut there. Oh yeah, line cut. Have you had those? And then salt in it. Poison salt from two years ago. Right, I'll put worms on this one as well. Get this, keep, got to keep shaking all the time. Oh well, yeah, oh, there's the worm, there's the worm. How long's that lasted? I bet that's not 30 seconds. That's that's frozen and salted ragworm. I've used it before. Do you know what for bream? I think I think he's come off, but yeah, he's come off. But there was a bream there. I think it's better than squid. I've got to be honest. No, it's still there. Amazing. You think it would have washed off, wouldn't you? Something in a small. Don't know what it is, Orkney or something like that there. Probably been out mackerel or something. I can't be doing with the mackerel other than for bait now because I just end up taking half a bucket full for more chum next year. They were on that in a flash. Hey look, look, look. It's just at the bottom. Look, 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 look. I told you they love that rag. I can't even get this up in time. Look, got him. Pretty sure he's on, there might be a second one there. One attracts the other and they're scrapping around. Well, that was a result. Look, look, look. <laughs> I think that's a nibble, Graham. 
See if I can whiz another one out there quickly. A little sort of a quiet spell. I'll take advantage of that to uh, lose some of this bait and chunk it. Just like fishing for yellowfin tuna. see a hundred pound yellow thing coming up there what a dreamer bring back ascension island well nothing's taken the trout is it Which is strange. Some of it floats, some are bringing the birds over. I throw it close to the boat so a lot of time the birds can't get to it. Well, we got a sort of dead period coming because the tide I can tell by the float is wanting to move I've had another couple of bream and I think I've got a doggy or maybe a small eel on here because I was snagged up I'm just about to recast I'm guessing a small eel I don't know oh bigger than the last one two congas anyway Billy two congas Ugh. he took me in a snag I slacked off and then did a bit of hand lining and then managed to get him out. Wow. So no big eels, that one I had earlier on, that was a, a much bigger eel that I lost, to be honest. And that hook is not in the best position there. I think I'd better if we pliers. He's off. Now, maybe a piece of, I've got a squid on the other, so I took the, uh, off that one I took the trout off and I put a piece of squid on. And what you can do guys, is look, when the tide dies, the chum will go straight down, like this. It's just barely dying. And that can always be a pretty good time for, uh, for fish. Um, not so much the small ones, they like the tide. Keep that one cool. Just in case something bizarre happens. Look, I've got loads of chum. Oopsie. Chum in the boat now. And this chum should sink a lot down, uh, uh, down a lot better over where your sort of bottom fishing baits are. Look, there's still a bit of tide there. Lovely little bit of tide, but not sort of not strong enough to get the fish on the go. Right, let's bait up again. Oh, look, 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 look. And there we go. That's on the manky ragworm. The mankiest manky ragworm, about two to three years old in the freezer. Salted does it. It's definitely the salt. It cost me a fortune in salt, probably, but. At least I don't just throw the worms away, look. I'm catching better fish now than I did when I bought the worms brand new, fresh and live. Casting off the beach, catching two rockling and a pouting. And now dried out the worms are oh, getting me spanking bream. I'm watching the other rock because I only just dropped that down there. You can't argue the bream fishing. It's about number 15. The bream fishing is very, very good. And yet during the summer sometimes, it's tough, the traditional times, it's like everything's changing. Frank too has had a nibble, boys. And he's still there, that's on uh, squid cast way back. Feels like...
Feels like a doggy. This is what happens in a slack tide. A, the boat swings around and you don't get the fish you want, you get snagged in the bottom. Dogfish come on the bite. There's an outside chance of Congo over slack water and skate, you know, different braids and skates. I'm saying this is a doggy and it is indeed a doggy. And I've gone to a very light lead because there's not much tide now. How many people go from carp fishing yesterday, then they go roach fishing, then they go river fishing, beach fishing, and just out in the boat? I don't think as many do what I do. Let's get some more chum in. Don't think there's any actually. I think a few have had a go. They find doing the all-round fishing ain't as easy as it looks. We can all go for half a dozen species, but when you break it up, it gets uh, a bit trickier. Oh, sandals in there, they're all down. A nice conger, I need a nice conger on Frank here. Go for a real big piece of squid. Just got enough flow to go. What I do is when I cast, how can I describe it? About nine tenths of the way through the cast, I start breaking the reel down if it's a fixed ball, so that it sends the bait past the weight so it doesn't tangle. So that as it hits, the lead's here, the tide's going that way, the trace is back here, and hopefully, if you lower it down not too fast, it will stay straight. I bet there's nobody else even tried shark fishing out of these old boats. I'll certainly give it a go loads of times. A bit of pioneering fishing, that's what's required. And I'm hoping I'm going to get a bit of a tide run going the other way and I'll offload it there. I've had an on and off bite from this white rod. So I've got a feeling it might be in the bottom. Was. Yeah, I think uh, a little tip when you're swinging, when the boat is swinging at anchor, rather than what I've been doing is casting away from the boat, trying to get the best out of the tide, as the boat swings, is pulling those baits sort of laterally across the seabed into the snags. You're better off, to be honest, either wind up until the tide turns and don't fish at all. Difficult, impossible for me, difficult for some of you guys, I guess. Or you just wind it and fish vertically so your lead's on the bottom and then just raise the lead about five, six inches so you can feel it bump. And of course the trace might be still on the bottom and the bait bumped along the bottom, but you've got a chance of a fish. Of course you've still got a chance of uh, snagging the seabed, but less, I feel less. So that's what I'm going to do. Rebait, retie up some rigs and drop it just vertically straight down until the, then as the boat swings, your lines are going with it rather than dragging into it. I hope that makes sense. I'm not a teacher, I just try to pass on tips which have been expensive to me and lost gear in the past, so all fishermen know boats when they drag at anchor are a pain. You just don't fish, you might pick the odd fish up. And I'm stripped here, even the small hooks, but they could be stuff like pouting. And here's the most exotic bait somebody gave me, I don't know how old it is, a red mullet. Has anybody ever fished? with a red mullet before. I'm going to fish with a red mullet flap. I don't know whether he got it from the supermarket, bait shop, or what. It's not mine. Well, it is now. I've no idea. I say this could be a first, because I don't think I've uh, even fished with a red mullet as bait before. You can imagine all the restaurant people go, oh my God. Fine dining. That makes me die, that does when I say that. Fine dining. It's food, just eat it. It's just fine, fine dining. Only 74.50 a hit. It's 
sometimes you just want a bowl of cornflakes, don't you, and a bit of toast. Look at that, boys, look at that. It's that nice in the sun. It's going to probably get snagged in the bottom. It's a big bait for the congas here, but I'm looking for a bigger conga. I'm going to follow my own advice. I'm just going to... Oh, hello. I just lowered this one to the... Oh, I dropped it straight in the... Ch oh, who's ever done that? Has anybody ever done that? Straight in the fourth chum sack. That's because the tide's not pulling them tight. Followed my own advice, fishing vertically, and there we go. Straight up and down, that was. No tangles, and a fish on. Oh, that's a bream, that's a nice bream. I'm using freshwater hooks, by the way. B, whatever they are, so I don't know, but they're, they're sort of relatively soft wire. So you've got to be careful. And this is a soft rod, so that sort of makes it forgiving enough. We're overdue a, a decent conga. I'm hoping when the tide turns, there might be a chance. Look, lovely bream. Now, when I was casting out there, oh, he come off, but you saw it anyway. I've gone back to squid, by the way. I did a switch to squid. I've got all my chum there ready for the turn of the tide. So all I do is Whack a bit of squid strip on like this. Just hit the bottom. And just keep it vertical, straight down like that. And even if you have to at slack tide, or when it's starting to swing on the anchor, um, you know, just raise it a little bit off the bottom. The fish do come off the bottom over, just there, there. Now the lid is probably just over, of the seabed, so as the boat swings, the lead's doing this, it's swinging at the same time. Let's get this one down there, see if we can avoid tangling with the uh, chum sacks. Also, another thing, you might want to fish with a shorter trace over the uh, slack period. Might last 30 minutes, might last an hour. The problem I can see I've got, it was northeast wind when I first came out here, is what they call quartered, it's gone right round east south east, not quite southeast about east southeast so the tide wants to come this way so what I mean it wants to go this way and that little bit of breeze is going to keep me from swinging them right around and being a neap tide there's not much power not much flow not much oomph to it normally the tide would override that bit of wind it's not going to so I feel it's going to be messy for the whole afternoon so I'm figuring the tide's going to want to go here the wind's going to hold the boat off the tide the lines that side are going to go under the boat, the lines this side I might have to stack go in that way. Well, we'll see what happens. Now I need to lie down. Vertical fishing's got me another one, but hopefully. Well, Mac will fight about this, he's got the other line as well, which is always fun. Yes. Come aboard by beauty. Look at this. Is this not a rarity? Joking apart, I think it's the first one I've had this year. I think he's on a one way ticket, don't you? Straight back down, my lovey. Lovely, jubbly. Peering over the side, side excitedly thinking, is that a mackerel? I think it is a mackerel. I don't think that's a bream. As soon as you hit the bottom, squid. He's got the other line. Yawn, yawn. It's a mackerel. You're going to make a mess of this. So I'm going to whiz him straight in. Another one. Big mackerel too. Another jumbo. Other rod's gone off as well. I wonder why the mackerel are right on the bottom. If it is a mackerel. Yeah, it's a mackerel. Pretty sure. I think I better go to squid strips. No, it's a bream. Ooh. Now, you might think squid strips are good for black bream and stuff. And those frozen ragworm that I had were good. But this fresh mackerel, look at the colours in this. That sort of bluey bit on the back there, 
and the silver belly, belly you can see the sheen of the different colors in there maybe if I move the camera around strips of that is really good for loads of fish so I'm going to fill it that one up and get strips out of it and then I can use the head for um, conger and stuff like that mind you the conger a bit slow let's get these strips done first you get a couple of fillets off of that but one of the best parts is just here I'll get through that just there and take that thin belly cavity off and you could even if you're careful split that down again always watch out with sharp filleting nice and then that really will flash in the water pretty much those two bits like um, a sliver of and they will you know waver in the water a bit like a small sand eel So it's hard to believe, but one of the best baits for mackerel is a strip of mackerel. That's fresh, and that's going in the box with the other one. And that fillet will go down again in a minute. We've got a bit quiet at the moment. Let's see, see where I was, look. The boat was pointing down there, straight towards Tor Bay, or Torquay. It swung, swung, swung. Now the wind's stopping the tide, because the tide's so weak being a neap tide. So I'm sort of stuffed, really. Frank's on. Long time waiting, it's been very dead guys. The dead tide. Dead tide, dead fishing. I'm getting through the chum now, but I'm not getting the payback. You'd think I am, but not really for the amount of chum I've put in the water. Quite a few more mackerel, another five, six mackerel. This guy's moving around a bit. Too much for a dogfish. 
What is that? Oh, it's a bream. Wait for this. I thought he was moving, moving about. A bream hooked in the ear. Hello. On well, the back, at the back of the head somehow. Who'd have thought that? Yeah, another bream. And they they're shredding this squid, but they're not, you know they're not really going like mad on it, hammering bites because I can actually have a little lay down and listen to the reels. This one I cast back there. So nowhere near really where I thought where I thought the chum would be. Shark lines down the back facing the uh, beach there and the cliff. I've tipped a load, load of chum over. I've emptied another bag at the back. I've got none here. All my bags are empty. I'm getting very much cleared out, which is good. And that'll be my shark fishing done. It's too much like hard work. Done it for 50 years. I've had my share. It's now getting harder and harder, unless you go further and further west. Let's see if we can get this down and catch some sportfish mackerel. Give him a bit of chump. Little bit of movement in it, not much. Look, it's just drifting, but it's drifting in rather than along. I wanted it going this way. But at least it's moving. Well, I've done this before down here. I've uh, come down, fished the weather as it were. I mean, you've got to take the tide as it is. You can't pick the tides. I know bigger tides, spring tides are better. But if it's blowing over every spring tide, I'm never going to go, am I? So I know the spring tide's good. I knew it's neap tides. I've no choice. They gave a good forecast. It's just picking up now a bit. I think what I'm going to do, and I've done this before on a, on a what I call a poor tide, a neap tide. I'll go inside, because it should be flooding by now. Give it maybe 20 minutes. Go inside, at least I can have an hour and a half in there. And there should be a bit more tide being shallower and closer to the headland. Less chance of a conga. But hey ho, I've given these cog about three or four, at least four hours of my time now. <laughs> well, don't let me apologise. It was a bite, but it was a doggy bite, I think. I thought Frank was going to come good then, I thought he really was. Yeah, you can see the wind's gone from here, and that's come right round here. South down here, west is up here somewhere, so it's just going round the clock. And that one's going under the boat, which is what I said they would do. So, uh, do you know what, I think I just called it quits here. I've had a load of bream, I've done really good on the bream. Half dozen mackerel, dogfish. Couple of those little bootlace congas, something. No decent conga, it's, it's weird. Nothing here on the uh, red mullet. So, I think we'll up anchor, pull the shark line in, and uh, see if I can. Just in there, just going another quarter of a mile. See if I can pick a bit of tide up. Well, I've moved in shore. Uh, Turn the reefs off the rocks, off the headland. Definitely work, definitely got the tide. Just haven't got the fish. It's just, I don't know, it's peculiar. You can see all the birds, I've cleared all the chum out, that's all gone. There are a million seabirds around me. They're enjoying that chum very much. I've had one in the boat because he got tangled up in the braid, which was fun, not. But um, if you do get hold of a seagull, just be aware they generally will go for your eyes. So hold them at arm's length, use a pair of leather gloves, or uh, like I've done, I had a hand wipe. Wet the hand wipe, put it over the head, you can get on them by the head. And sometimes you've got spikes on their heels, I suppose what you would call spurs, uh, like cockles have. So be careful with them, especially some of like greater blackbacks, but beware of small ones as well. And you can untangle them, just gently untangle them, let them go. No problem, they're just crashing the line when they're all excited when there's loads of food in the water. And can you blame them? I'd be excited if there's loads of food in the water, there's not much at the moment. But there is tide, so I'm basically just baits on the bottom now, looking for maybe a ray to finish off with. It turned into sort of a good little session, started off well, not so great at the end, so that's just the way it is with these neap tides. A 
lot of the time you can move in shore and actually get more tide. Um, I don't know why this is, because you go to somewhere like the Bristol Channel, you would actually move in shore to get away from the tide. But I've noticed down here that um, there's a bit of a bank in there inside the reef, and it's worth a go in there, basically trying to get a little bit more flow. You can see it coming past, uh, you know, the hull there. I'm actually trolling a set of feathers with a mackerel spinner or lure. It's not actually a spinner, it's a spoon. You don't want a spinner because that will twist the line up without an anti-kink vein fitted to it. But you can put a lead on there and that stops it to, you know, twisting too far up your line. But you can pick up fish on the troll and I am at least trying. Mm -hmm. 